I remember watching a Lifetime movie when I was a teenager about domestic violence. And I remember watching that movie and thinking, why doesn't she just leave? The things she was experiencing were so awful and I couldn't understand why she wouldn't just tell somebody or, or just get out of the situation. My name is Jessica Perrier. I'm a daughter, a sister, an Aunt Jessica, a top leader, and a survivor of domestic violence. It's hard to understand something until you experience it yourself. And that's exactly how I felt about domestic violence until it touched me. One in four women are affected by domestic violence at some point in their lives. No one is immune. I was an honor roll student. I played sports all year round. I had what looked to be a picture perfect relationship from the outside. If you know me, you know I'm quite strong willed and I was back then too. I met my boyfriend when I was in 10th grade and everything was fine when it started out. Um, slowly, over the next year or so, he became a little bit controlling and wanted to know where I was all of the time, uh, had an opinion on my clothing, you know, started to put me down. I went from name calling to getting physical. Now, mind you, from the outside, everything looked fine. He was smart enough to hide the bruising, and I was dumb enough to want to protect him. I mean, after all, I was strong enough to handle it, and he was sorry. Because you see, it's, it's normal in these kinds of situations for the aggressor, whether it's, it's physical or, or mental or financial or sexual, it, it's normal for the aggressor to be sorry and to apologize. It's also normal for the victim to accept that apology and genuinely think that things are going to change. Over time, I was pinched, choked, pushed, spit on, bitten. One time at a school dance, he didn't like how I was dancing and he pulled me by my ear off the dance floor. We went somewhere private to have a conversation and he pinched my nose so hard that the tip of my nose turned black and blue. I still have a piece of graphite stuck in my arm from when I was stabbed with a pencil. These things occurred over many months, over a year even. And then one time I started to fight back and everything went from bad to worse. I didn't know if I was gonna make it out of the house that day. When I would make my way to the door, I would be dragged back away. He was screaming in my face and he threatened to kill himself, which is also a form of abuse, just so you know. Because he was threatening to do it because of me. My parents had no idea. If a teenager can hide it from their very involved in their life parents, then anybody can. You never know who is affected by something like this. And let me tell you firsthand, it's not something that you want to talk about to anybody. I had a lot of close friends. I was close with my family. I was embarrassed that I was letting it happen, but I was strong enough, so I thought, to handle it. After that day when I wasn't sure if I was going to make it out, I made it out and the bruising was hard to hide this time. So I finally called my best friend and I asked her to come over and take me to the police station. She came over to my house. I took some pictures with like a 35 millimeter camera because there was no such thing as digital cameras back then. And she drove me to the police station. I took my camera and told them what happened. I didn't want anything bad to happen to him. I just wanted to protect myself. So I went asking for an order of protection. I didn't know that the state that I was living in at that time prosecutes anything of this nature. So just by me asking for that order of protection, immediately an arrest warrant was issued and my boyfriend at the time was picked up. Now we were both in the same grade in high school and it was like the last week of school when all of this had happened. Um, when people at school started to find out, they didn't believe me and said that I had made it all up. 
I had done such a good job hiding what was happening to me that nobody believed that it ever happened. They thought he could never do that. How could that have been happening and nobody knew? And you guys, I'm telling this story now because I want more people to know. I lost a lot of friends that last week of school because they didn't believe me. And you know, it was like a year or two later that he did it to somebody else and they started to reach back out to me. Prominent members of society can still do bad things behind closed doors. Awesome high school students can still do bad things behind closed doors. You don't know what's happening. Next year, it will have been 20 years since the experiences that I've described to you today. In the last 20 years, I've gone on to attend and graduate college, study abroad, start and sell a business, and today I live the life of my dreams empowering other women in their own businesses. I think back on this time in my life often enough, um, but especially every October. It wasn't easy for me, but I did make a decision to ask for help, and I'm so thankful that I did. Despite how strong I was, and how strong I thought I was. Domestic violence knows no limits. And no matter how strong you are, you can't handle it on your own. So to the woman that thinks they can handle it, or to the woman that thinks they won't believe you, or to the woman that thinks this is love and he's sorry, he might be sorry now, but he's not going to stop. Please tell somebody. You never deserve to be called names. You never deserve to be scared. You never deserve to be hit. One time is too many. Tell somebody today.